Welcome to e Know How. In this video, we will look at how a CMOS latch operates and how it is built using transistors and gates. A CMOS latch is a memory element that stores a previous state. So, the heart of a memory element is always two inverters connected back to back like this. So, you have inverter, say we will call this A, inverter A. The output of the inverter A is connected to the to the input of an inverter B. But now, I'll add a switch here. So I will explain why the switch is added. <coughs> so this is the memory element and then we need to have a way to provide or bring in the input. So the input comes in through another inverter. and we will have one more switch here. So we'll call the switch S1, we will call the switch S2, <coughs> and this is the Q out of the latch, and this is the D input of the latch. Let me call this inverter 1, and then we can have another inverter 2 to generate Q out, which is just Q out bar, which is the opposite uh, of Q out. So Q out bar, we'll call this inverter 2. So this is how a latch is built. And we will have to consider the two cases when <coughs> switch S1 is open and S2 is closed. And then we have to see the other case when S1 is closed and S2 is open. So we will look at both the cases. And so this S1 is controlled by enable. So that is another input, enable. And S2 is controlled by the inverted signal of enable, so enable bar. Or you could write it as So what it means is you add one more gate, one more inverter, you bring in the enable and then you generate enable bar and this enable and enable bar will control, will control the transmission gates, the pass gates S1 and S2. So S1 and S2 are actually CMOS pass gates. And now the other thing I need to add here is <coughs> inverter A is strong and inverter B is weak. We'll see, we'll find out the reason why it is. If you have a switch, you, you need not have a weak inverter, but usually there's no point having a larger area for inverter B because it just keeps the previous state. So let's take the first example or redraw the circuit when enable is high. So enable is high. So what we said is switch S1 is closed and S2 is open. <coughs> so the circuit will look like this. Let me redraw the circuit with a different color here. So you have the inverter 1 whose output is now connected to the input of inverter A. <coughs> and if you look at the inverter B, the output of inverter B is not connected, is open, is not connected to the input of inverter A. And here is the Q out and this is the D in. <coughs> so what it means is in this in this state Q out is nothing but D in. <coughs> so when the enable is high the latch passes the D input onto Q out. Now let's set up some logic states for these uh, inputs. Say assume D in is high and then the output of inverter 1 is low and the output of inverter A is high. 
So this high comes in, goes to the input of inverter B. So the output of inverter B is low. <clears throat> so what you notice is on both sides of the switch S2, the we have the same, we have the same state or <clears throat> you have zero here and zero here. And now let's take the other example where your input DN is zero. So here it is one and the Q out is zero and zero comes to the input of inverter B and the output of inverter B is one. <clears throat> so again you see that the output of inverter B is the same as the state at the input <clears throat> of inverter A. So let me close this in a box and then we will write the other case where S1 is open and S2 is closed. So this happens when enable is low. So enable is zero and then S1 is open. S2 is closed now. So now what happens in this case? <clears throat> so you have the D in inverter 1 which brings in the D in here D in and then you have the switch S1 which is open now so the output of inverter uh, 1 is not connected to the input of inverter A which forms our latch and now this is inverter B the output of inverter B now since S2 is closed is connected to the input of inverter A and here is your QR. So now what happens is let's assume the example where uh, DN was high. So when DN was high we wrote this when DN was high the output of here was low. So assume the switch S1 was closed before when enable is high. So this was 0, 1 here one here and you had a zero at the output of inverter B. Now what happened is we opened switch S1. What we did is we opened switch S1. We closed switch S2. So this is now latched. The previous state of DN. So DN was high. So Q out is high and it remains high. Now, now at, from this point onwards say D in changes from 1 to a 0. So the output of the inverter 1 goes from 0 to 1 but since the switch S1 is open it will not pass to the input of inverter A. So this state, this logic, so if you look at this latch which consists of the two inverters connected back to back that is latched. So even if you happen to keep changing your D in say 0 to 1 and maybe 1 to 0 again so your <clears throat> output will remain at high because that was the, the this output this is the output that was there when initially when the enable was high so you latch that output and keep it there so in this case what we can say is when enable is low so we wrote we said Q out is D in when enable is high so Q out is Q out or we should say Q out N the state the current state is Q out N minus 1 so it's the previous state. So now we can write uh, we can write a um, truth table for this and also we can look at it and we can input some waveforms and see how the slash behaves. So let me close this in a box. So we saw that just to recap, so we saw that the latch <coughs> essentially consists of the two, the memory element of the latch is inverters A and B connected back to back and then you have two switches S1 and S2 and D in comes through another inverter and that's because you want Q out to be the same polarity as D in so you have two inverters in the path and we have uh, this enable uh, and enable enable coming in and you generate enable bar 
and then you control the two switches S1 and S2 and S1 and S2 are CMOS pass gates usually CMOS pass gates and then there is a video on how a CMOS pass gate works so we, you can look at it these two are CMOS pass gates and now let's go and write the uh, truth table for this so D in is the input D in and enable are the inputs so let's put enable here D in here and then we put Q out as the output now let's put all the four different combinations possible combinations 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 now we saw that we will start filling it up from the bottom here we know that when enable is high it passes D in so it should be 1 or that is equal to D in and then when you have 0 at the input the D in is 0 enable is high you have 0 which is nothing but D in again whatever is on D in and now when you <clears throat> when enable goes enable is low when enable is low it will store the previous state irrespective of what D in is it will store the previous state so we can write this as Q out N and we put this N plus 1 here just to say that it's the current state Q out N so this is the truth table for the CMOS latch and now let's take some uh, few uh, waveforms and see how just I'll try to uh, give you how it performs so let's assume enable is a clock which keeps clocking and then let me draw a D in input which looks like this I'm just drawing a random input so it's truly random I just put this in so let me name these signals this is the enable which is a system clock in this case this is D in and let's look at what the Q out is <clears throat> so uh, we really don't know what this Q out is before before the clock w went high or enable went high so assume that uh, is high so let's take high to start with on Q out and then enable goes high so it now it has to pass D in so it goes low immediately because D in is low and then goes high it follows D in till this point when enable goes low from then on it will keep the state previous state so till enable goes high again it remains high even though there is a fall of D in you can see the falling edge of D in the Q out does not fall and now at this point once the enable goes high it goes low again remains low and at this point you see the rising edge of uh, D in here which is ignored because enable is low and so that happens till this this point here and then here D in is high it goes high again then it follows D in because still enable is high at this point it remains low and it will go high again with with the D in going high because the enable is high so this is the Q out so it's really interesting you